In this video, we're going to look at experimental design as an introduction to designing your own experiment. We're going to look at what the scientific experiment is, uh, some advice on some of the different disciplines. We'll look at the different variables that you need to know about, as well as the different types of variables and the use of a control. So firstly, what an experiment is. It, when we use the word experiment in science, an experiment is an ordered procedure carried out to test and validate a hypothesis. And it gives us insight into cause and effect relationships. So what we're basically doing with an experiment is having a formal procedure or a formal method of doing something to prove that one thing affects another thing or causes an effect in another thing. If you're not actually manipulating variables, so if you're not actually changing things, if you're just having a look at something that has changed without you changing it, you're not conducting an experiment, you're conducting a survey. For this assignment, I do not want you to conduct a survey. Surveys can be useful uh, in science, and we use them when we're dealing with things that using, uh, actually manipulating the variables, is immoral or unethical. An example of this would be, say we were doing an experiment on a new type of asthma inhaler, and we gave one group an asthma inhaler with our new drug in it, and we gave the other group an asthma inhaler without anything in it, or with salt water in it, for example. So what would happen is when people had an asthma attack, those who did not have the drug would be at harm of dying. So therefore it would be unethical to use this experiment to prove the efficacy or how well that drug works. We'll now look at the disciplines of science that you may choose to do your experiment in. Now physics and chemistry usually have good results in their experiments and this is because it's quite easy to control all the variables in physics and chemistry. Biology can be good, can be bad, it depends on the experiment. I wouldn't say don't do something involving biology, uh, but there are a few problems associated with it. One problem is that it's hard to control all the variables. There's just, with living things, there's just too many variables to be able to control everything. Also, if you're looking at plant growth, for example, it takes time for those plants to grow. So the time it takes you to do your experiment is extended. Uh, psychology, as a scientific discipline, can have many confounding variables. So many variables that it's just impossible to firstly control or secondly know about. So we we'll usually give you unreliable results. What they do in uh, psychological studies, when actually testing things, they test very, very large groups of people so that these uh, variables kind of even each other out. But you won't have the facilities or the time to be able to do this. We'll now look at the different variables. The first one, one of the most important ones, is the independent variable. And that's the variable that you are changing. And we can remember the independent variable because it starts with I and it's I change. So independent, I change. If you've designed your experiment well, this should be the cause. So we've said before that an experiment shows a cause and effect relationship. This should be the thing causing that effect. And when, if you're having trouble working out which one, if you're looking at an experiment and you can't tell which one's the dependent and which one's the independent, usually because we pick or we change the independent variables, we usually choose to change it by a nice and neat amount. So for example, if temperature was the independent variable, uh, we might pick 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees. So you see that they're going up by nice, neat, steady amounts. The next variable is the dependent variable, and the dependent variable is the one that you measure. Now going back to our cause-effect relationship, if you've done your experiment well, this dependent variable should be the effect part of that cause-effect relationship. And we could say it's dependent because it is dependent on the cause or the independent variable. Now here, some people can get confused because they think that time is always the independent variable. But time can actually be 
either. It can be the independent variable or it can be the dependent variable. <sighs> so if I was looking at how far an object travelled over time, time would be the independent variable in that circumstance. So it would measure at 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 40 seconds. On the other hand, if I was looking at how long it took something to travel a certain distance, time would be the dependent variable, because the independent variable would be the distance, maybe 100 metres, 200 metres, 300 metres. Now the controlled variables should be all the other possible variables in your experiment. And if you control these and make sure that they stay the same, and don't become confounding variables, so confounding variables are when you don't control your variables properly, it makes your experiment a good valid experiment. Now to make a good valid experiment, you should have one independent variable, one dependent variable, so one thing you're changing, one thing you're measuring, and everything else should stay the same. An example of where people come unstuck here is growing plants, so they might grow uh, two different plants, one with water and one with salt water, and they measure that plant each day. So they have both time in days and height in centimetres or whatever, and both of those are things that they're measuring, so they're both dependent variables. So what you'd do is you'd control one of those variables. Either you'd measure both plants after 10 days, so you control the time, or you would measure the day at which the height reached 10 centimetres. Now there's two different variable types or types of variables and these can relate to both your independent and dependent variables. There's a continuous variable and this is one that has an infinite amount of data points between each point as well as it has a defined order. So for example, mass is a continuous variable. So if you look at two data points, one kilo and two kilo, halfway between one kilo and two kilo, there's 1.5 kilos, halfway between one and 1.5, 1.25, halfway between that, 1.125, halfway between that, 1.065, and you can keep on going with this. So this is a continuous variable. There are as many data points between the points as you like. When you graph a continuous variable, you're going to get a line or a scatter graph, and that's what we want for this experiment. On the other hand, discrete variables are ones that don't have a particular order, and there aren't any points between. So for example, if our independent variable were different textiles or different materials that we were testing, and we had the materials silk, wool, cotton, rayon, there's no points between these. So there's no thing, nothing that's halfway between silk and wool or halfway between wool and cotton. They're different things. Uh, in the same sense, if we were measuring silk, wool, cotton, rayon, it would make no difference if we measured wool, silk, rayon, cotton. Uh, we could put them in any order we like and it wouldn't make any more or less sense. When you're using discrete variables as your independent variable, the appropriate way to graph this would be using a column graph, and that's not what we want for this assessment. Finally, the use of a control. Now, a control, which is different to a controlled variable, remembering a controlled variable is something that you make sure stays the same throughout the, all the different experiments. Uh, now, a control might be appropriate for some experiments. It's not necessary for all experiments, uh, but when it is necessary, it's a separate trial where there's an absence of the independent variable. And this absence of the independent variable is usually accompanied by replacing that with some sort of placebo or fake uh, thing. So the person doesn't know that there's an absence of that variable. So for example, if I was doing an experiment and I was measuring the effect of different amounts of coffee, which would be in the independent variable, on the heart rate, the dependent variable, the control would be having a separate trial in where I am not drinking any coffee at all. So for example, I might drink the same amount of water and then measure my heart rate. So that would be a controlled or a control group, different to a controlled variable. In this video, we've looked at the scientific experiment, what the scientific experiment is, and it's a procedure 
that helps us show cause and effect. We've looked at the different disciplines. I would recommend chemistry or physics. Biology sometimes works, depending on the experiment. And psychology, I would recommend steering away from. We've looked at the three different variables in the independent variable, the one that you change or the cause, the dependent variable, the one you measure or the effect, and the controlled variables being all the other variables that have to stay the same. We've also looked at the difference between continuous variables, which have an order and have points between the points, and discrete variables, which don't have an order and don't have any midpoints. And we've looked at the use of a control and where the use of a control, being the lack of an independent variable, might be appropriate.